talking about important concepts and tools that are key to developing in Drupal 7, fields, entities, and lists, mostly from a code perspective. We're making the assumption here that you know enough to create a basic module in Drupal, the module file, the info file, and if necessary, the install file. Get Drupal to recognize it and enable it. Uh, these are items I use every week, uh, if not every day, and a working knowledge of them is essential for a developer in the Drupal field. So, they were introduced, entities and fields were introduced in a limited fashion in Drupal 5 and Drupal 6 as nodes. They became pretty standardized in Drupal 7, or at least a substantial effort was made to standardize them in Drupal 7. And they're gonna be everywhere in Drupal 8. Knowledge of what they can do and how to use them is critical. Now, the code functions will change. The way we use them will change. The concepts that drive entities and fields in Drupal 8 are the same concepts that drive them in Drupal 7. So while we won't be able to transfer much of the code from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, we will be able to take a conceptual knowledge, which is part of what we're talking about today. And that will drive into Drupal 8 even harder than it is in Drupal 7. So at their core, entities are units of information. They're PHP objects defined by classes, which allow for the storage and manipulation of various types of data. So what that means is that an entity is a thing in Drupal. It's a, it's a collection of data. It has functions that you run on it, methods that you run on it, um, that are sort of modular. These are the entity types that ship in core. Contrib modules greatly expand that list and you can create your own entities as well. Uh, so nodes, comments, taxonomy terms, and user profiles. Those four are the fundamental units of information in Drupal 7. Um, Drupal also allows you to define different types of each of those, except I think user profiles. Uh, so let's take a look at what that actually looks like in practice. I'm going to turn this so that I can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. So this is a demo site that I built. And under the structure menu, you will see content types. These are node types. There are, so the, the demo here, to take a, a very topical item for us right now, is Star Wars movies. And so we define the two basic units here, characters and movies. Now the movie type looks like this. Movies in the Star Wars series, you can define title, you can define all of these things. And then there's this manage fields thing. The benefit to having multiple types of nodes is that you can assign different fields to them. Now a field is a sub-collection of information. In this case, we have the title field, we have a synopsis field, we have a character field. Now the character field is a reference to the character content type. We have Saga, which is original trilogy, prequel trilogy, uh, upcoming new stuff, which I don't think has been defined in Star Wars canon yet, and uh, random other stuff like the holiday special that we don't really talk about. Um, and then some other stuff, release date, chronological order, uh, so the in-universe order of when these things happened. So all of these things define some aspect of one of the movies. Each of the movies has all of those things. Now if we look at the character content type, we will see they have different fields because the character content type is about a different type of information. We don't need to know which trilogy one of the characters was in because some of them are in more than one. Uh, Jedi Master Yoda is in five of the six original films, five of the six first films. Um, age range, well an age range is not terribly useful for a movie, well, it was made in 1977. We know that it's now uh, 37 years old. That's not a terribly useful bit of information for a movie. So these are different things that you can do with a content type. Now you'll notice that this, this is a standardized interface. It looks the same. You can look at other This is a taxonomy term. 
If you look at other entities, you can see that the field interface here is standardized as well. It's the same interface. There's a really good reason for that. The admin UX is very cohesive in Drupal 7 for stuff like adding fields. Let's see, am I missing anything? Yeah. These are field types. So a field, being a unit of information attached to a node, can be one of any number of different types of information. You don't want to store a number as a large block of text. You want to store it as an integer. So we have all of these different fields, and they, they accomplish different things. Text field and text area. One line of text, multiple lines of text. The module that provides them is listed in parentheses. These are core modules. They come right out of the box. You install Drupal 7. You have access to all of these. Text area with summary. So two text boxes together, one little one, one big one. File, image, those are obviously upload fields. Radio buttons, check boxes, single select and multi-select, various ways of handling short or long multiple choice items. So you can have, uh, let's see, a good one on the character field was gender. Male, female, other. This is Star Wars, there are droids, there are really weird alien species, so other is a viable choice there. Um, other is a viable choice in our society as well. Uh, taxonomy term. So taxonomy is a classification system. It's a list. Um, and the taxonomy field provides a reference to this other entity. Decimal, float, and integer, various ways of handling numbers with decimal places or no decimal places and varying degrees of accuracy. Contrib modules greatly expand this list. Um, so you can, in fact, as well, you can create your own field type, though it is very rarely at this point necessary to create your own field type because there are so many contrib modules that have done that already that something you need, if you need it, is probably out there. These are some of the uh, most useful of the contrib field types. Um, but they're some of my favorites, and honestly, most of those, I would argue, either belong in core or are so <coughs> close to belonging in core that the only reason they're not is that they're a maintenance hassle, uh, the media field, notably. So date and date pop-up. Date pop-up is the nice little JavaScript one where it gives you a little calendar and you click the day. It's a great one. Media and media YouTube, various ways of handling um, video and audio and other more complicated than an image media files. And entity reference. Entity reference is the most useful field. That allows you to say, my node relates to this other node. Now, a very good case that we will see an example of in just a minute is the movies. I built an entity reference field into the movie content type to characters so that you can create, get a list of all of the characters that are in that movie. And the advantage to that is when you have a character that is in more than one movie, you do not have to enter all of that character's information twice. Jedi Master Yoda is attached to five of the six original movies. I do not have to make five Yoda entries. So Drupal allows you to store and access information directly in the database. You can actually go right to the database, grab something out of that table, and bring it back into your code. So there's a lot of functionality devoted to that already. DB select field or DB select function, uh, DB update function, and so on and so forth. So, how are entities different? Why would we use them instead of storing information directly in the database? One of the most powerful parts of Drupal has to do with what we call CRUD create, read, update, delete. These are the fundamental database operations. These are the, basically the four main things a database can do when it's handling information. Create it, read it, update it, and delete it. Entity types. Now if we were, if we were building this site or building a, a, a code base a framework to handle data directly, we would be responsible for all of these operations. We would have to write the code that accessed it in the database. We would have to write the code that created the form 
in which we enter the, the information to send to the database. We would have to create uh, the form that looks stuff up or the, uh, the code that looks stuff up. We would have to create to manage the difference between update and create. Drupal handles all of that for us with entities. They automatically create their own HTML forms. We don't have to write them. They automatically do validation. They automatically do all of the database operations. They send com confirmation messages to us. They give us access to all of those things automatically as soon as we turn on the module and configure the fields. Let's take a look at a node edit field here. So we're going to go to content and we will pick a movie because it's already up. So we'll pick episode four, A New Hope, which happens to be my favorite. Title, Star Wars, parentheses, episode four, A New Hope. Description, it's an epic space opera written by George Lucas, starring all of those people. Uh, notably, Frank Oz is not there because this is the only one of the first six films that Yoda does not appear in. Brief description, and there's the entity reference field. So that's a list of characters those are character nodes that I've already created with their own information. That's the list of the main characters for the first film. Saga, original trilogy, release date, there. Chronological order, four, because of course it's episode four. View counter we'll talk about possibly later. Um, a bunch of other smaller information and save Delete, these are kind of not terribly relevant. Save and delete. You'll recognize save and delete as update and delete from our CRUD acronym. It already did the R, the read, in order to get us all of this information. We can save it and we'll take a look at it. It handles the creation. Go back. Where, what happened? What did I do? It handles the creation of the form. It handles the output of the format of the display. It handles creating links out of these entity references. It handles the list and uh, the listing of all of the taxonomy stuff. So if I click on original trilogy, I get a list of all of the movies that I have tagged original trilogy. So that's why, that's why we use entities, because I didn't have to write code for any of that. Everything you've seen so far happened in the admin. There's no code. That's the advantage to Drupal entities. That is the power of Drupal entities, and that is why you use Drupal instead of building it in PHP straight. Because if you built it in PHP straight, just with vanilla PHP with no framework on it, you are responsible for everything you just saw. You are responsible for validating that if you go to the chronological order field and type in banana, it throws an error because banana is not a valid chronological order. Four is perfectly valid. If I typed in banana into that field and submitted the form, we would get an error. You would be responsible for writing that error message. This is why we use entities. This is why we use Drupal. And that is the power that we have at our fingertips. And it's a pretty awesome thing. You would also be responsible for handling a lot of the form submission security handlers. And that is a very big deal. Um, validating that the form input, the post that goes to Drupal, is in fact a legit request is actually really, really hard and incredibly important. You'd be responsible for writing that. Using Drupal, we don't have to. All right, so realistically, most of what we've talked about, pretty basic stuff. You're probably already using it, so why am I showing it to you? Because everything you've seen, all of that standardization exists in the code as well. They're standardized in the, the user experience, but they're standardized on the back end as much as we can make them in Drupal 7. Do you want to load an entity in code? Use entity name load and give it the ID 
of what you want to load. Each entity in Drupal has a unique ID. This is a very, very fundamental database concept. Um, and it's carried out pretty well in Drupal. All entity types have a load function. They all look like this. User load, UID, node load, NID, taxonomy term load, TID. Well, what do I mean by load an entity? Okay, that's a good question. Loading an entity means querying the database for one or more of those blocks of content that we talked about by the ID number. Drupal goes, gets and assembles all of that information. So it gets and assembles all the basic node information. It gets and assembles all of the fields that are attached to that node and their display, how they are out, and assembles them as a PHP object and then hands it back to you. So you can do whatever you need to uh, in code. This is the R in CRUD. And it's a huge block of data. Note, loading a node uh, results in a very large PHP object. It's a huge operation. Again, this is a huge operation. You're not actually responsible for writing. You, you type one form, one nine character long function. You give it an ID number, which is an integer. And it hands you back an incredibly complex piece of data. All entity load functions implement the core function, entity load. They are all wrappers around that. A couple of times, in some cases, there are a layer in between them. In the node load one, there is node load multiple. Not hugely important right now. We'll talk about that in a bit. Ultimately, all entities work this way. Um, they are standardized. That is for a good reason. They're standardized so that we know how to use them out of the box without having to dig through uh, a ton of information. They are all standardized so that entity name underscore load is their load function. Saving an entity, either a new one or one that already exists that's had an update, is much the same. This would be either C for create or U for update in our acronym. Entity name save. Node save, comment save, user save. It is worth noting in Drupal 7, they do not actually call a centralized entity save function because they are too different. They are not entirely standardized in their data structure on the back end. I believe that that is changing in Drupal 8, that everything is call calling a centralized save function. But basically, they all work the same way. You hand it a PHP object that has all of that data in it by field names. Call the function, hand it the object. If there is no ID in your object, if there's no ID field in your object, then it creates a new one. And when you get the object back, it will have the new ID attached to it. If it has an ID attached to it, when you hand it off to the save function, it updates. It's pretty cool. So what do we do with them? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Did I have more notes here? Ah, there we go. <sighs> Deleting a function, pretty much the same thing. Oh, I know what I was going to do. I'm sorry, hang on. Where's my mouse cursor? Okay. Ah. So I'm going to show you a very quick example <coughs> of function. Here is a node load function. Node equals node load NID. Node now is a PHP object full of data. If node type is moving or node type is characters, do some stuff to it. Well, let's see what that actually looks like. If you do not know what the dpm function is, look up the dvel module. It is your friend. dvel is a module, developer tool module, uh, allows for really nicely formatted output. Like this. That is a node object. NID 36. Type movie 
language, we have not defined multiple languages on our site, so it is undefined. Uh, create date, change date, and fields. That is what it looks like. Now, back to PHP Storm here for a second. Every time we load this from that page, it changes a value in field view counter. And then, node save. So if you look at the very bottom, counter one, counter two, counter three. This is a really stupid example, but it illustrates a very clear point. I'm not loading the node through its form and changing that value. I'm changing it programmatically in my code. You can do that. So I called node load. I got all of my information back. I tweaked one and I sent it back to the database. And it's changing every time we load that. That is what you can do in code. That is a really tiny example of what you can do in code. You'll note that I am checking for the presence of that value. So if there is one, increment it. If not, set it to one. So you can compare against the values from the database on your node and change them. You can make decisions based on your values. We'll go back to entity delete here and I'll actually explain it. Entity delete works very much the same way. You hand it in an ID, it deletes the node. It deletes that block of content. It runs through all of the fields and deletes all of the information for that node in the field tables. It erases all history of it. If there is a listing on your site that you've created of nodes that a user has created, it's out of that list. It's gone. Now, when you delete a node from the UX, you go to the node, you edit it, you click the delete button, it gives you a nice window that says, do you really want to do that? You do not get that in code. You run node delete, you send it a valid ID, bye bye, it's gone. There is no more node. Um, so be very careful with this, which is why I'm not going to demo no delete. <laughs> I do want to draw your attention now to something you may have seen earlier, node load multiple. Drupal gives us, most entities give us, the ability to load more than one node, more than one block of content at a time. So you send it an array of IDs and you get an array filled with those node objects. Um, it's a shortcut. It's a very handy shortcut. It's a very dangerous shortcut because if I have a very complex node object and I send node load multiple an array with 50 IDs in it, it's going to attempt to assemble all 50 of those nodes and hand you back an enormous array of data. That's if PHP doesn't time out on you. Be careful with this. Node load when you call it, essentially calls node load multiple with an array with one NID in it, and then hands you back the information. <coughs> you can, of course, use this yourself if you like. We will talk about that. We will take a look at it because it is also right here. So that counter function that you saw can also be rewritten to use node load multiple and a for each loop. So node load multiple here sends back an array filled with multiple nodes and then loops through them. Let's take a look at how that actually looks in the browser. Counter for Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, six. Counter for Empire, one. Counter for Return of the Jedi, one. Seven, two, and two. So on and so forth. You can act on multiple nodes. 
at once if you wish. And all of the things that you saw before, you can check a field value, conditionalize it. You can add it, you can change it, you can manipulate it. You call node save again. Now node save does not have node save multiple. You have to do each of them individually. Very simple when you're looping through it. You can output stuff based on those values. It's pretty much the same except it's in a loop. Very powerful function. Does have a bit of, you can indeed write something that will bring down your site. So we've seen a fair bit of what you can do with entities and with fields and how you can create very different data structures and data arrays. Let's see how you can do with lists. There's two kinds of lists in Drupal. Well, there's probably more. These are the two most fundamental, most widely used, uh, and most powerful. They have very different capabilities. They are both very powerful. They are both incredibly useful. They have a lot of overlap, but they are different use cases for different needs. Views. Views is the single most popular contributed module in the Drupal world, according to statistics posted on D.O. At its heart, Views is a query generator. <coughs> it generates a database query or multiple queries that create a list of entities. That is what it does. That's its job which can be filtered by any value in that entity. So any field, any core value, you can filter by ID, you can filter by created date, you can filter by any value in any field. You can use it to generate a list of nodes of all type blog. You can use it to generate a list of all users that were born on your birthday, if you have birthday information. You can use it to generate a list of all nodes tagged with a specific taxonomy term. Probably the most appealing part of views is that there's a UI for this. You don't have to do any of what I just said in code at all. All in an incredibly powerful interface. Let's take a look at it. We're going to go to views, which is under the structure menu. Views is a contrib module. You have to download it and install it and enable it and enable the Views UI module. Let's add a new view. View name. Characters. Description. Star Wars characters. Show content of type characters sorted by title. Create a page. Page title is characters. URL is characters. Display a grid of yeah, we'll go with titles link. Now well, let's go with fields. Fields. We'll display 20 of them. Continue and edit. This is the UI. It's intimidating. Spend some time with it. Learn to use it. It will be worth every moment of time you spend looking at it. It will be you worth every hair you pull out screaming because it's frustrating. It will be worth every time you look up online how to do something crazy with it because you will be using this a lot in Drupal 7. Okay? But if we scroll down, look at that. There's a demo section, preview section. It shows us a list of all the characters in our database. Well, okay. Let's add a filter. We can filter on gender, because gender was one of our fields. Uh, expose this field filter to visitors. Very powerful checkbox right there. If you don't, then what you're setting is a very fundamental thing that cannot be changed by the user. They don't get a choice in your list. If you expose it, It gets a label, and it becomes a form element right on top of your list. 
Star Wars is not terribly well gender balanced. <laughs> Just a fact, I believe they are course correcting for episode seven. Uh, and that the one of the main characters is a female, and possibly more than one. It's just a fact. It's also not terribly droid balanced, let's be honest. Well, let's, uh, let's add another filter. Age range. And expose that too. Okay. Well, how many old dudes are in there? Eh, that's not bad. Notice, you know, what, 900? Emperor Palpatine's pretty old. Chewbacca's 200. That's, that's pretty decent. We can also add additional fields. Let's say we want the brief description. Okay. Well, we don't need to create a label for it. We can change style settings. We can add classes or not add classes. We can customize labels. We cannot. There you go. That's looking pretty good. All right. Let's save that. Now we saved it. Oh, let's add a menu entry. Normal menu entry, title, characters. Uh, we'll put that in the main menu with a weight of zero. And save that. And what's that look like? Hey, look at that. Character. Oops. Wow. Writing that in code would have taken me about three or four hours. Writing that in code as a new Drupal programmer would probably take you two days. That's views. That's the power of views. That's why we use views. Is I can throw this up on my site in nine minutes, complete with a menu entry and a horribly misspelled yeah. Okay, what's, what's the other one? Here. What is Use good at? Use is good at making lists of content with any and or all of their field data. It is good at printing those lists in multiple places. Had I wanted that to be a sidebar listing somewhere, we could have done that very, very easily. It creates blocks. It can create RSS feeds uh, in any of the RSS formats. It is really, really good at filtering, especially based on user choices. What is it not so good at? It is not so good at being modified in code. It is possible. I can, in fact, load a view programmatically in my code, manipulate it. I can change its query programmatically. None of that is easy. It's possible, but possible in easier different things. Uh, it is of, it is possible to do complex interrelated queries, to have generated a query there that looked at the character and then looked at all of the movies that that character is attached to. That is possible. So we could have gotten a list of that said Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is in episode four, five, six, and we'll add it to seven because apparently he's in seven. Or at least Mark Hamill is in seven. <laughs> Performance. Performance is a concern with views. The more complex the view, the more complex the entity types that it's loading, the longer it takes. Um, this is not so bad when you're creating your grandma's blog about her pie baking hobby. It is very bad when you're building an enterprise level site for a client that is paying you a lot of money and has a lot of traffic. It is possible to optimize, to uh, cache, 
to do many, many things to make views perform well, it is difficult. The other list type that is most commonly used is EFQ, Entity Field Query. This one has no UI. There is no way of generating an EFQ through the admin interface. It is all in code. A lot of people may think that that makes it an advanced technique. Yes and no. It's a really useful technique. It's not hard. And there are a lot of great references out there. My personal favorite one was written about three years ago by a very close friend of mine named Tim Cosgrove. It is on the Phase 2 blog. I don't normally promote our blog just for promoting it. I use this reference every time I want to build an EFQ because I can't always remember all of the code statements. So I'm constantly going to this one. Um, it's, Tim thinks it's the best thing he's ever written on our blog, and he wrote it like three or four years ago. Uh, so we will actually show you. My, we'll take a look at one. Where's my cursor? Where'd you go? There you are. Entity field query. Query equals new entity field query. Those of you who have done PHP object-oriented programming will note I just instantiated a new object. It's an EFQ object. It is one of the few, uh, that's, that's a technical detail, doesn't matter. Query, entity condition, entity type is node. Okay, so we've just restricted it from all of the entities that Drupal knows about to nodes. Bundle, that is type, which is to say node type. Characters, okay, now we are making a list of nodes that are type characters. So movies are out, blog posts are out, pages are out, just characters. Status equals one. That is, nodes that are published. Property condition status equals one will be in almost all of your EFQs. So note that one very carefully. Entity type equals something will be in almost all of your EFQs. Those two lines are like default. Title, a property order by. Title, ascending. Okay, now we're ordering it by their name. That is a fundamental list of all of the published character nodes in our site. You'll note, it's not pretty. It's not views. Well, okay. Let's add an additional field condition. Now we are querying on a field. So this is a field that we've attached to our node. Value, array, female. Okay. That's a lot shorter list. One line of code, and I've reduced it to only the women in the series. Result, query, execute. That means we built this query, but it hasn't done anything yet. It's just right now a list of parameters and instructions. Execute means go do it. When we execute, Drupal goes to the database, runs the query that it's generated out of all of those instructions, and sets it to the result. And we've got some very, very basic, yes, I should have used a theme function output here. Creates a list. Yes, I could have used theme item list, I didn't. But I wanted to illustrate the point that for each result, node as an ID loads the node. So it goes to the database, it tells Drupal, hey, I have this ID. Go get me all the information about it. Now the reason it does that is because when you run query execute, all you get is a list of IDs that match your query. You do not get the full node. This is for speed reasons, because node load is an expensive function, and you don't always need all of that information. So if you need it, go get it. If you don't need it, if all you need is the list of IDs, great, here you go. Output equals some stuff, return. 
That's an EFQ. That is a really basic EFQ. The key here, field condition. That's why it's entity field query. Because it allows us to query stuff in unrelated table, or in not in unrelated, but in different tables. Because when Drupal stores field data, it's in a different table. You've got the node table that has node title and node ID and create date. And then you have field gender, field data, and field gender, field revision, or something to that effect. I don't remember the exact sequence. So all of your field data is stored in a different table by reference. One of the first things in there is entity ID. So your field gender data table has an entity ID that relates to the node table. We've got two separate tables. Entity field query lets us define lists and join those two tables together based on, that, on the separate field information tables. It's incredibly powerful. And again, if you were writing this from scratch, that database query would take you a couple hours to put together. We can write an EFQ in minutes. EFQ is really good at making lists of content and returning you the IDs and only the IDs. It is great for working within code. It is great for filtering based on values from code. It is really pretty performant. It's pretty fast. Um, comparatively speaking to views. Largely because it's not spending all that time assembling the HTML. It's not spending all that time, excuse me, generating crazy queries and loading all the nodes and generating the HTML. EFQ is not so good at being modified in the UI. I would say actually that it's not good at all at that because it's not possible. There isn't one. And if you tried to build a UI for EFQ, you would wind up with views. You'd wind up with something that looks so much like views that you might as well not have bothered. So there are different things for different uses. It is not as great at easily, out, easily displaying output in pages or blocks. Obviously, it's possible. We just did it. It wasn't very pretty. It requires a lot of theming. If you want an easy HTML page list of stuff, use views. If you want a highly performant list that you can use to manipulate data in your database that doesn't ever have to be displayed, use EFQ. If you've got an edge case where you need a list of content that is easily themable, that is not a full node, but it has to go really fast, spend the time to use EFQ and then work with your themers. Uh, it is also possible to use EFQ and then query the database for only one or two field data. So you get the list of IDs, you go directly to the field table and get that value based on the IDs rather than load the entire node. If the node is big and complex, this can be faster. It is much more complicated. So that's kind of an advanced topic. EFQ leads you down the road of becoming a much more advanced programmer. And it's a very good entry point for that. Um, it's one of my favorite Drupal 7 techniques. I use it all the time. Sometimes I use it too much. Um, but it has an incredible amount of value. We have time for a few questions. That is me. That is how you get a hold of me. Uh, SJ Interactive is my personal Twitter. Phase 2 is our company Twitter. You can reach me at either way. You can reach me at uh, drupal.org srjosh, or that is my email address. I welcome questions, either on email or right now. I will give stickers away for questions if you have them. When you talk about field collections, when to use them, when to lose them? <laughs> field collections, that's a great question. A field collection is an entity type that is available in Drupal that is it is a way of handling a use case when you have data attached to a content type, for example, where, I'm trying to think of a good example. You saw the add one more button when we were looking at entity references, and it added the possibility of multiple characters. Let's take a look at that.
R2-D2 because I like him. Oh, no wait, I gotta go to the movies. Sorry, movies has an enemy. So right here, there's an add another item button. And if I click it, I get one more form element. Now it is possible to conceive an opportunity where I click add one more item and I get two form elements. Because whatever I'm adding has two points of data with it. But I don't want to use two separate fields because of the way that they need to relate. Field collections are really great UI. Uh, especially if you've got a themer who can handle the back end and tweak them to make them all pretty and kind of go together in a grid or something like that. They are really great for that. If you need to manipulate their value in code, they are a colossal pain because the data structure is so incredibly complex. So I would say the, the answer to the original question was when to use them, when to lose them. Use them if you have a need. Use them if you have a need to add multiple blocks of data to a to a node, and you're not going to have to ma manipulate the data manually. Or you're willing to take on the complexity of manipulating that really incredibly complex data structure. Lose them if you're not willing to do that. They're very useful. They can be a colossal pain. I just wanted to add that uh, ingredients in a recipe is a good use case for that. That is great. That is a good one. Ingredients in a recipe. Uh, for example, if you've got a recipe uh, with, it's got a sauce component and then a meat component and then this other like combination component and the sauce and the meat are two different things, that would be field collections. Like for instance, the thing that you're adding, the ingredient and how much there is of it, so those are related. Very good, you wanna right. Put those in a separate content type. Perfect, perfect example. So every time I add an ingredient, it's got a quantity and a thing, an ingredient. Quantity ingredient. But I don't want to add just quantity, 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 because then I have one cup of, one tablespoon of, one teaspoon of, of what? So those are paired. Very good example. Thank you. I'll give you a sticker for that example. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, over here. Is there any way to connect the uh, use with other types of database than MySQL? Right? Yes, there are. Uh, the question is, is there any, any other data backend for views, basically. Is there another way to connect views to another data source? And yes, there is. Uh, one of the most powerful is uh, Apache Solar Views. So you can actually get a search engine driving views. Uh, I am using that on a project right now. And it's incredibly powerful. It's a little less robust in some ways. And it's a little more, a lot more robust than others. So yeah, there are multiple data sources available. And you can create views on more than one content type as well. Or more than one entity type, rather. You can create a user view or a taxonomy term view if you want. So yes, uh, there are multiple ways you can connect it to other, other data sources. In those entity relationships, do you ever override the, uh, the node ID for some other field, like the title, or like yeah, just some other field within? So say you have Darth Vader, two instances, but technically they're, they're unique in their own right. Mm -hmm but uh, you need your users to be able to pick between the two. You know what I mean? You can. You can. There are ways to manipulate it. You, there are there's some configure. So, I'm sorry. Uh, the question was with entity references, is it possible to display other data in that field? The answer is yes. Um, you can display other fields. You can, you can lose the IDs. Uh, there are trade-offs. Um, if you get rid of the IDs, if you have two nodes with the exact same um, title, it will throw an, an error. Um, there are, that's the most obvious trade-off. So, uh, I have time for one more. Uh, are content types considered entities? Uh, the question is, are content types considered entities? Yes, they are. Nodes are entities. Uh, content type is a way of saying a collection of nodes that has a specific set of fields. So content types, all content types are nodes. Nodes are entities. Um, so all content types are entities, but they are all nodes. So they are all entities of type node with a what's called bundle, on, which is a property of it and governs which fields are attached to it. Um, I can show you a, a very clear example here. Uh, if you want to meet me at our booth later or come by at some point, I can show you an example. All right. That's all we have time for. Again, I'm available.